Hello again. When I hear the expression white supremacist, it conjures up for me pictures of burning crosses, the Ku Klux Klan, and segregation in America's Deep South during the 1950s. I suspect that many people have a similar notion of what white supremacy entails. It is true that there was such a culture until 50, 60 years ago, but it has faded and vanished over the decades. By about the year 2000, white supremacy was no longer a thing. This presented a serious problem to those who wished to make a living out of exploiting friction between different ethnic groups in the United States. If white supremacy culture vanished entirely, such people would be out of a job. Let's face it, if all races and ethnicities were rubbing along well together, as was increasingly the case as the millennium approached, then there would be no need for race relations experts and anti-racism workshops and all the other profitable little enterprises which made this a lucrative cottage industry. It was necessary to redefine white supremacy so that it could be demonstrated that it was not only alive and kicking, but was in fact the dominant culture in both the United States and Britain. Those uh, advocating critical race theory were in the forefront of this struggle to preserve racism, but theirs was not the only game in town. A couple of characters called Kenneth Jones and Tima Oaken came up with a curriculum to be used in workshops, universities, companies, schools, and anywhere else where the credulous and willing could be persuaded to part with their money. This was called dismantling racism, and they managed to ensure that white supremacy culture would never come to an end by defining it in the weirdest terms imaginable. I give a link in the description to this video to a typical piece of anti-racism, um, but what, what shall I say, uh, paperwork, part of you know, the materials used to persuade people that white supremacy is still an active thing. It is a hugely successful and profitable business in America. Dismantling racism has become a, it, it's the go-to resource for an awful lot of organisations. Here are the features which, according to the Dismantling Racism curriculum, distinguish white supremacy culture. Perfectionism, sense of urgency, defensiveness, worship of the written word, paternalism, either or thinking, power holding, fear of open conflict, individualism, only one right way, objectivity, and rights to comfort. Whenever you see these sorts of things in your university, government office or workplace, you know that white supremacy culture is at work, oppressing black people left, right and centre. Take the first of those giveaway clues. Perfectionism. Say you work in a bank, for instance, and the manager is constantly harping on about having to get all those sums right so that the books balance properly before the accountants arrive to audit the place. Right there is perfectionism, a sure sign that your boss is a white supremacist. Then there's the sense of urgency. If you're at university and the lecturer expects everybody to be sitting down ready for the lesson at a precise time and gets tetchy and impatient if students turn up later, or perhaps it's your boss who requires you to finish a task urgently by the end of the day's business. That too is white supremacy culture at work. Worship of the written word. Yes, I've known all too many bosses and people working in academia who suffer from this. They insist on having reports in writing. What is more, they want all these documents to be grammatically correct and every single word spelled correctly. Worship of the written word or what? More white supremacy culture. 
Only one right way means when a mathematics teacher explains to pupils that in order to carry out calculations, a precise order of operations must be adhered to. That is telling them that there is only one right way. Or when the company you work for wants things done in a certain order. That too is white supremacy culture. Fear of open conflict. Yes, it's true. There is a strong tradition in Britain and America to avoid open conflict and to settle disputes in a more low-key fashion. I've always thought it a sensible thing. Rather than settling trifling disputes by stabbing each other up, we tend instead to sit down and find a way of settling things without open conflict by compromise and mutual agreement. Objective thinking is a bad sign as well. Whenever somebody tells you there's such a thing as objective truth, watch that man. He's probably a white supremacist in disguise. By framing white supremacism in this way, those who make a living out of anti-racism may rest assured that they will never be out of a job. There may not be burning crosses and lynchings anymore, but you will surely always be able to find a boss who is a perfectionist or somebody who wants to avoid open conflict. This is a classic example of the Emperor's New Clothes, a racket which is so obviously absurd and yet so craven are we that none of us dare say outright that it is all utterly mad.